Hello there students, parents and guardians of Kurak Secondary College. My name is Taz Herman or Mr. Herman to the students and this video is going to look at how to use the program Essential Assessment um, .com .au. This is a program that we used in Career Up Secondary College last year and the year before, and we feel as though as a math domain, it is in our best interest to use this program again, considering the circumstances of uh, remote learning. And the majority, if anything, all of the learning will be done strictly online. This program works well um, with online assessment, and so it was in our best interest as a math faculty to use this program. Some students, or most students at Kuriap Secondary College used this program last year and the year before. Um, so they will be familiar. Um, and possibly some of the students who are in year seven now used it while they were in primary school. Um, but if you have not seen this program before, both as a student or as a parent, um, it's recommended that you watch this program so you can get your head wrapped around how this program works. So, the first thing you were going to do is you're going to head to the website essentialassessment.com.au and preferably use, if you're on a, a computer or a laptop, preferably use Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. If you are using an iPad, um, it, the program doesn't necessarily lend itself to iPads. Um, for most cases it does work, but any uh, iPad minis especially uh, tend to have trouble. So if you have the ability to use a laptop or even a Mac, um, definitely use uh, that and Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Uh, you can use Internet Explorer as well, um, but sometimes Internet Explorer just does not um, work well with um, some features on there. Once you have gone into the website, you're going to um, find a page that looks like this. And on the top right corner here, there's two functions, student login and teacher login. Um, for students and parents, uh, you don't have two separate logins um, for parents and one for a student and one for a parent. You're just going to be given one student login, but as a parent, you have um, you have every right to want to log into the program itself and see the the progress um, that your child has made. So, when you go into student login, you're going to be met with these. Um, I'm just going to delete this. You're going to be met with these three. Sorry, that's just my son in the background streaming there. You're going to be met with these three. Um, three things to, to be put in. You're going to have a school code, a username, and a password. The school code for Kurok Secondary College is KWRS3, or in capital letters, 3981. When you put this in and you press enter, the program is going to register this and it knows that that's the school code for Kurok Secondary College and it's going to change to the actual school name. If it doesn't change, it either means you've put the school code in incorrectly or you've put KWRSC in small letters. It has to be capital letters. Now for the username and password, this information will be sent out to, uh, to you guys via your um, math teacher. The username um, traditionally starts with whatever form group you are in. So in my case, I teach 703. So all of my 703 students are gonna have a username that starts with 703 and then a number afterwards. Uh, the number usually is the position in the role in alphabetical order from last name. Um, but this isn't the case now, they've changed the system around. So it will be 703 for my 703 students and then a number afterwards. And then the password is a randomly generated password that um, generally has five or six numbers in there. Uh, again, this information will be provided to you either via email or compass. Um, when you get these details, you're going to go log in and you're going to be met with a certain page. And I'm going to get to that page right now. Okay, put that information in, sign in. 
Um, it's good if you are using Google Chrome to have this uh, password and username automatically saved if the option does come up. And that way you don't have to keep logging in every single time. It's just a one login and then anytime you come into this program, uh, it automatically logs you in. So <clears throat> when you get into this program, you might be met with what I see here, or you might be met with um, a topic that's different to this dimension in geometry, or you might not see anything there at all. This purely just depends on what your teacher has to set. In this case, this student is in 703, which is my class. And because of this, I've set a topic that is in the measurement and geometry strand. Uh, there are three strands that's in mathematics. You got number and algebra, you got measurement and geometry, and you got statistics and probability. Every single topic that is learned from year seven to year 10 belongs to either one of those three strands. In this case, I've set a topic in measurement and geometry, and because of this, the measurement and geometry um, button is there ready to be pressed, and that blue dot there indicates that there is a test, either a pre-test or a post-test, that's ready for, um, for a student to do. Okay. Uh, you'll also, <clears throat> also notice that there are a few um, different features and buttons uh, around the screen. Uh, the first one you might see, um, I know most students see this, is a little avatar here. Um, you have the ability to change this avatar. Um, and there's a new feature that has come out this year to um, unlock different um, little items. Now, I've never seen this before. And I'm assuming that it has to do with Sunset Mass, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but for now, if you want to change your little avatar, you can change it to whatever you wish. Um, and then you can just click out here to get rid of that. You'll also notice that there is a star and a trophy area. Um, trophies and stars are, um, are achieved when you do certain um, fine numeracy worksheets to the best of your ability. Um, if you get a really high score in these worksheets, you are rewarded with a trophy. Um, but if you do relatively well, you are rewarded with stars. Um, it's good to have a good tally of this. I know a few of my students um, are quite competitive with getting stars and trophies. So, if you have something different to measurement in geometry, you might go ahead and click on that. Your teacher will coordinate what is the first pretest that needs to be done. So, measurement in geometry, when you click on this, it shows me that using units of measurement is the topic that we're first going to look at. And again, there is a blue dot here to indicate that this pretest needs to be completed. Okay, now that we're in this topic, there is a pre-assessment and a post-assessment. Um, for parents, in a nutshell, um, it's self-explanatory, but if you're still a bit unfamiliar with pretest and process, uh, pretest just means uh, this is a test that we do before a student visits the topic just so they can get a, um, we as teachers can get an understanding of how much a student has grasped this topic from previous years. Um, when a pretest is completed, um, so when we go complete this pretest, the program is very smart and it's going to uh, determine certain topics. Um, and subjects that the student did not complete well or what's considered misunderstood. And then these worksheets are provided um, as activities for the student to do. Once they've completed all or most of their worksheets, they then go ahead and do the post assessment, which is pretty much the same as a pre-assessment. Maybe the, the, the questions might be slightly different here and there, numerical. Um, and the whole purpose of this is to try to see if they can get a high score in their process as opposed to their pre-test. We want to see growth from one to the other. So what you will do as a student is depending on what topic your teacher has provided for you, you are going to always start a pretest. You cannot do any numeracy topics um, 
you can't do any new topics without doing a pretest first. So, when you get into your pretest, it's a very basic layout. Um, you will have the question, which is in the top left. Okay, this will tell you what you need to do or ask you what you should do. Um, and if you wish to listen to this, there is also an icon here that will um, actually pronounce out the question to you. Okay. Uh, below that is the set of numbers that go across. Um, each pretest and topic will have a, a varied amount of questions. Um, so try not to ask your teacher how many questions there are. Um, because they won't necessarily know because every single topic has a different amount. And then below is what you will need to complete or need to work out or provide based on what the question um, is. So in this case, drag to order the masses from heaviest to lightest. And you can see that these masses here are given in grams or in kilograms. Um, so there's a bit of conversion that needs to be done. Okay. Uh, you'll go ahead and drag certain um, the certain amounts from heaviest to lightest, so the biggest to smallest. If you have trouble or you need a bit of working out of some sort, there's a little function here that's called Sketchpad. When you click on this, <clears throat> you can actually draw your working out here. Um, for some students, if you have a tablet of some sort, you can use this and it pretty much acts as a, um, a Sketchpad. Um, but if you don't have that, it's a bit tricky just to use a mouse or trackpad. Um, so if you find this a bit tricky, Essential Assessment has added this new feature where you can just use a keyboard. Um, and you can go ahead and put in whatever working out you wish to do that will help you for this. Okay? Um, if you find that there is a question that is quite tricky, uh, it's recommended that you put working out for the teachers to see because we can see these uh, the working outs from our perspective from the teachers perspective um, and if you have a certain question where you got the working out correct but you put it incorrectly into a sexual assessment we as a teacher can override that and mark that as correct so it's in your best interest to show as much working out as you can depending on what the question is now if there's a certain question that you just have no idea how to do your best bet is to just give a um, just give it a go. Try not to leave the question blank, but if you have no idea, you can just go to the next question and go across. Okay. Um, once you have uh, filled in your questions and you have completed it, once you go towards the end, in this case, there are 26 questions. Once you've uh, completed all the questions, you're gonna go finish assessment. Um, and you can review some of the questions if you wish. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video, I'm going to complete this test as much as I can, purposely trying to get some questions wrong, and then that way you can see, um, potentially you can see what will happen um, once you finish your pretest. Okay, I've gone ahead and completed all the questions, including the last one. Once you've completed it, um, it will have all the questions from 1 to 26. Um, if a question hasn't been completed, it will show in red and it's going to double check to see if you wish to go ahead um, without answering that question. Once you uh, completed your test, pre-test, you can click submit and what it's going to show you is the score or as a percentage, so 38 out of 100. And you have the ability to review these questions and see um, certain sections that you learnt from that test and what you did not learn or did not get from that test as well. Um, in saying that, your pre-test is going to be different to uh, the people in your class. So don't feel like as though um, that you you feel bad that you got a, a what's considered a low pretest. It's just a pretest. You got to remember that nothing has been taught in this topic. We just want to see how much you have learned from the previous years. Okay. Um, you can also go ahead and review these questions, and this is good for parents to see 
uh, what certain questions they um, the students got incorrect. It will show the student sequence or what the student put in and what the correct sequence should have been from uh, the questions there. Okay, And it's good to have a review, see um, what your kid did well and what they didn't understand. Um, you've also got the ability to click on overview and you can see the questions that you did get correct and you didn't get correct as well. Um, so overview is a really good option just to have a look. You can then exit and you're going to click on this button here. This is always the previous or to go back to the previous page button. Okay. Once you've done your pretest, this is where the teacher direction um, will be given to you, uh, or given to students specifically. But what next topic should be done within this section here that's called My Numeracy? Now, based on the pretest that's been completed by me, the program has said, okay, these are the things that you did not understand from this pretest. This is what you're going to work on. Okay? And you'll notice that some of these topics are readily available for you to do. And there are other topics, you remember there are two pages, that are blanked out. The reason why these ones are blanked out is because you need to complete the first three levels or skills first before you can visit the other ones because they're deemed a bit trickier in comparison. So, uh, your teacher will tell you um, what is the first um, worksheet you need to work on. Uh, what teachers will do is they're, they're going to wait for everybody to complete their test, the pretest. Um, they're going to look at all the results collectively through the teacher login details and they can see pretty much behind the scenes of how students work. And they can either choose certain topics for a group of students to do or maybe they can work in a linear fashion and give certain um, worksheets um, and work on certain worksheets as a whole. So you've got to remember that these worksheets that have been provided to students is strictly based on the pretest results. But the teacher has the ability to flip and flop around, change these topics if they wish to um, to suit the, the class if they wish to, or they might leave it as is. It is all dependent on which teacher you have and which um, subject you're working on and ultimately which year level you're in as well. So, how a worksheet looks like we're going to go ahead and click on measure with scaled instruments maybe when a year seven students uh, year seven student does a pretest they might not have this topic because maybe they understood how to measure with scaled instruments but in billy bob's case he's going to look at this topic and there are going to be four different types of stars that you're going to try to reach uh, the understanding fluency problem solving and reasoning stars okay um, and they get trickier and trickier as you go along. Once you're ready, you're gonna click on start and you'll notice that the format for this is going to be the same as the pretest. Um, but the only thing that's different in this case is there's going to be a little section on the right hand side that is called learn, okay? This learn tab, when you click on this, will give you a little clue or a little snippet of how you should approach this question. Now, when I say this question, I mean this type of question, not that this question specifically. You might get a similar question in the next one. And when you click on this uh, learn function or learn button, it's going to say the same thing. Okay, so it's not uh, specific to the question itself. It's just specific to the type of question that you get. In this case, use the ruler to measure the side length of this rectangle, um, and it's asking what the side length is. In this case, we know that it's seven centimeters, but for argument's sake, let's just say, let's put two centimeters. We know that this answer is gonna be wrong, okay? What this will do is will give you live feedback. It will tell you, hey, you've actually got this answer incorrect, and how you're meant to answer this question, and it's gonna show you that little learn tab again, say to find the length of a sign use a ruler to help with your estimate okay and that's purposely why there's a ruler there um but if you get the question correct 
Um, in this case, use a ruler to measure the side length of this shrink tangle. In this case, this is 9 centimeters. When you get the answer correct, it's going to say, well done, you got it correct. You can go to the next question. Okay. Um, and pretty much, this is how essential assessment works. It gives you a pretest, and then it gives you topics for you to work on. If you wish to not answer a question, just like in the pretest, you can go over it and skip if you want to. And then when you're ready, you can go ahead and finish the activity. But at any point, um, say for instance, you might want to take a break or um, you've been called to do something else, you're going to work on something different. You can go ahead and click on home. And what that will do is that will pause this skill set, yeah, this work that you need to work on. And at any point, you can resume that later on. Okay, so maybe you might say, hmm, this is a bit tricky, I might go to a different one. Okay. So that is the crux of essential assessment. As a, as a parent, you're more than welcome to use those login details to log into your, um, your kid's uh, essential assessment um, numeracy task and have a review to see how they're gone or even review the um, the pretest itself just to see any misconceptions or any answers that they got incorrect. Um, it's good uh, to get on top of that so that way you can um, determine um, what is the best uh, approach if um, the teachers haven't provided that information already. Okay. So one last thing there is a new thing here when you go back to your main um, your main screen there is a little button here uh, it's got a little game controller when you click on that there's a new section that is called sunset maths now career up secondary didn't use this um, function in the previous years uh, but as far as i'm aware uh, sunset maths is pretty much a, a game uh, game based um, program where you can answer questions um, before the sun sets, hence why it's called Sunset Maths. So say for instance, I click on Edition. Um, now this is very new to me because I have not seen this before, um, but it's good as good brain training games. 25 plus a certain number is equal to 29, that is 4. And we can go to the next question. Press enter. 31 plus a certain number is equal to 40. That's 9. Press enter. Okay. Uh, and your aim is to try to get this up to here uh, before the sun before the sun sets. Now it's up to the teacher whether they um, get you to do sunset maths or if you want to use it just as a bit of brain training to work on your arithmetic you are more than welcome to use this program sunset maths okay and that concludes this video on how to use essential assessment um this will be uh the main program that we are going to use during remote learning uh, at any point if you have any questions please first ask your teacher your maths teacher um for the answer because most likely they will know but if they will then not know the answer they can then email me and I can try to provide the answer for them if you have any problems to do with logging details for whatever reason uh, you can definitely flick me an email uh, the email address I'm just gonna pop up now uh, this is my email address. You can ask me questions if it comes to login details. Now you've got to remember that there's going to be quite a few students from the seven, eight, and nine using this program. So if I don't get to your email straight away, um, that's most likely because there is a queue of uh, parents and students alike trying to email me. Okay, so I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible when it comes to that. But First, uh, ask your math teacher first if you have any questions and then you can email me. This concludes this video of using essential assessment. Guys, please, please, please be safe. Wash your hands, sneeze into your elbows. Don't go outside, try to stay indoors. 
um, enjoy the rest of whatever time you have and hopefully this video uh, makes sense stay safe guys and take care bye